Hello everyone, welcome to the Narc Survivor YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how narcissists use black magic to control you. But before I begin, please give this video a thumbs up down below. It will help the YouTube algorithm to spread this awareness. The narcissist influences you by using supernatural forces, which have power over natural forces. They produce illusions by the use of deceptive devices with an intention to manipulate you by putting you in a state of fear. They will use certain symbols to destroy your mind and it won't require much effort from them. Because once they've put you in a state of fear and anticipation, the rest of it is you destroying yourself. Which is why it is important to be aware of it without fearing it. The narcissist has studied you. They've learned you. And they've identified certain things that you are reactive to so that they're able to control you. Where to an outside observer, it may seem as though you're in a trance or under a spell. And you may act out of character to where you're not following your usual pattern of behavior and motives. Because the narcissist understands the impact of your own psychology on you. And they know that once they represent certain ideas, rather than representing the real world, it will affect your state of mind and it may lead to you destroying yourself. Which is a horrific thing for someone to do to you. But the reason why they do it may be quite surprising. They do it to avoid rejection or in response to rejection, to your decision to not accept them, because their biggest fear is to be rejected, which is why their entire image revolves around being this object of desire, as someone who is impressive and imposing. At times they may seem arrogant and cold-hearted, but deep down, they actually want nothing more than to feel loved and accepted. They crave a sense of belonging. We all do. It's an emotional need. But for narcissists, they want that more than anything else. Because they felt rejected by their parents in childhood. They felt unloved, unseen and unheard. As though no one valued or cared about them which is a very traumatic experience for anyone. But for a child, it's one of the worst things that can happen because children need to be loved unconditionally. They need to experience a secure attachment to their parents. It's essential to their growth and development. But the narcissist's emotional needs were never met. And a child's desire to be loved unconditionally by their parents is more important than anything else to the point where the child will abandon themselves if it means that they will be loved and this is what the narcissist did as a child they abandoned their true selves and they created a false character who is everything they believe they're not everything they felt that they needed to be to be loved and accepted by their parents. The problem is that this process is irreversible. There's no going back. When a child abandons their identity, it can't come back. So the only thing they have left is their false self, which requires excessive attention, admiration and praise. It needs narcissistic supply in order for them to survive emotionally because they have nothing inside of them. It's just a void because their parents were meant to provide them with a sense of self-worth, but they didn't. 
So their self-worth was questioned and threatened. And then it was lost. If you're finding this video helpful, you can give it a thumbs up down below, which will help to support our community. The child accepted that who they were was not valuable. So they discarded their true selves in place of their false self, who they deemed to be omnipotent. And now the false self is all that they have. There is nothing else. Nothing else can be created. And there is no possible way to reverse this process. But this is why they can never be alone. And it's why they're so sensitive to rejection. No one wants to be rejected, but narcissists have very extreme reactions to rejection. To where it will cause a narcissistic injury. And they may lash out at you, triangulate you with another person, and even start a smear campaign against you. Because the existence of their false self is dependent on external validation. Without that, it ceases to exist. So when you reject a narcissist, it will feel like life or death to them, as though they're in a fight for their lives. And that is why they will often behave irrationally if they feel that you are rejecting them and they will resort to black magic as a means to control you or to prevent you from rejecting them. And it's because they hate rejection so much that they would rather settle for a simulation of love and acceptance. But when I say black magic, I'm not referring to witchcraft or spells. The narcissist black magic is their manipulation, lies, future faking, gaslighting, devaluation and triangulation. Because that is what puts you in a trance and keeps you under their spell. It makes you believe that you want them. Which then makes it more believable for them. Because you're sharing this fantasy that they've created inside their heads of them being everything that they need to be in order to elicit attention, admiration and praise from you. They may often go hot and cold and use the push-pull strategy and they may use intermittent reinforcement, which is where they give you rewards for certain behaviours or responses, but without any predictable pattern. And it's to get you hooked on them and to make you behave in a way that you wouldn't normally behave until you feel like you're eager to get something from them, whether it's compliments, validation or attention. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, they will often want to make you desperate for sex, even though when you think about it rationally, it doesn't make any sense. You may not even understand why you're desiring them. It may be completely out of character for you, but it's because you're under a spell. They've induced an altered state in you which wasn't there before. And it's so that they can get their narcissistic supply to prop up their false character. But this may also be your post-traumatic stress response. You may be fawning, which is where you placate and appease the narcissist in an attempt to reduce their volatility and abusiveness. So you're trying to please them and cater to their needs rather than your own to avoid conflict and establish a sense of safety by displaying excessive flattery or affection, by praising them too much and giving them a lot of attention to where you're acting submissive and being over attentive. Because although your mind may not be consciously aware of it, your body just wants it to stop. So you may often find yourself giving in to their demands and letting them think that they've got you. Or you may experience other forms of stress response, such as flight, fight or freeze. And it's because you're dealing with mental and emotional strain and tension from adverse and demanding circumstances 
from things that are harmful and unfavorable. The problem is that even the form response will not improve your situation with a narcissist. In fact, it will only make the situation worse as they get bored. Because their power and false sense of self comes from them being oppositional. It makes them feel like they're in control as they use it to compensate for their insecurities and deficiencies. Which is why even if you're on your hands and knees and you're begging and pleading for their mercy and forgiveness, that just tells them that they've got you wrapped around their thumb and that you're not going anywhere. And then they will take the opportunity to reject you so that they can project their feelings of non-acceptance onto you because they may not even realize that it's just a post-traumatic stress response. They may believe that it's genuine. So they will use it to establish a position of superiority and control over you. When in fact, despite all of their tools and tricks, they're actually just being delusional. They can't accept that you don't want them. So they will target your self-esteem and break you down mentally and emotionally to create this altered perception of their own self-worth through manipulation, lies, future faking, devaluation, gaslighting and triangulation to further exploit your form response to make themselves and yourself believe that you actually want them. When in reality, the opposite is true. They want you which is why they're so sensitive to the threat of rejection and they're acting irrationally. But you never wanted them. They just figured out a way to trick you into thinking that you want them. They manipulated and abused you to the point where you experienced the form response, which affected your sense of self because they targeted your self-esteem. So they held you ransom to their acceptance of you until you complied with their demands, when you were just placating and appeasing a false character that didn't have your best interest in mind because it's not even real. It's a shared fantasy, which means that you can only resolve it by going into your own mind because there was never anything for you to connect to. Which is why when you finally emerge from the fog, you will realize that you never wanted them. And in fact, there was never anything for you to want because it was a fabrication. It was just these false ideas and beliefs that they implanted in your mind. It had no basis in reality. But as long as you were willing to go along with it, they didn't really care. Because they were still getting their narcissistic supply. But it was all black magic. You were in a hypnotic trance. You were under a spell. It wasn't even you. It was who they needed you to be. But then it wasn't even them. It was just a projection of who they thought you wanted them to be. Your head was in the clouds. You were absent minded. So you thought you could fix them. You felt like you could accomplish anything with them. When this is all in your mind. Because they can't be saved. Who they really were died a long time ago. They're damaged beyond repair. So whatever you thought you wanted or whatever you thought you saw in them doesn't even exist. It's not even there. It was projected into your mind. They induced artificial feelings and beliefs in order to produce their desired effects. Where you were like a puppet on a string. You were thirsty for them. You were at their beck and call which was a very gratifying experience for them because their emotional needs in childhood were never met. And they really get a kick out of turning a person into the exact opposite of who they really are. 
into turning a positive, optimistic and hopeful person into an emotional wreck or by giving you hope even when there's little or no chances of success. Because that's what makes it so gratifying for them. When whatever course of action you take, or whatever you embark on, if they can find the power to make you go in the opposite direction so that you oppose and reject yourself, you go back on whatever you said you stand for. Because that to them is true power. That means they're in control. When they've never felt powerful or in control in their entire lives. So they're power hungry. They're on a power trip. And that is why they use black magic to break you down to the point where they feel like they own you. Because at least then they have something real. Or they have something that was real before they got their hands on it. And even then they will still reject you. Because they're broken people. They're very insecure. And they already felt rejected by you which caused a narcissistic injury. So now they just want to soothe their bruised ego by devaluing and rejecting you and turning you against yourself. Because they see it as though you're the one thing that's standing in their way of gaining control. And this is just what they do to their targets. They have no capacity for self-awareness or identity because they're just full of everyone else. They steal our qualities and traits and they leave us as a shell of who we used to be. They're occupying mental real estate in your mind, which you would otherwise use to hold on to, manage and navigate things in your life. Or to carry out day-to-day -day responsibilities and the roles that many of us have. Such as being a leader, a partner, parent, sibling, child, colleague or friend. But now you can't even do that because they're in, the, they're in your head now to avoid the risk of them being rejected and forgotten, which is very important to them because they've already rejected themselves. So they're not going to feel any remorse for rejecting you. And they actually hope that they can get you to the point where you reject yourself because at least then it's a level playing field. But this is why they're so afraid of rejection. Because they have no true self. So they lack self-awareness. Because there's no self for them to be aware of. Which is why everything they engage in is externally focused. They're always looking for feedback, trends, answers and solutions. Because they can't find anything within themselves. Which is why they will mirror you and desperately attempt to reflect your own qualities and virtues back to you to make you want them. But even then, it's not even them. They abandoned themselves a long time ago. So in that moment, neither they or you are real. It's a shared fantasy. It's shared psychosis. Which is why anyone who is around a narcissist long enough will begin to feel like they're losing their mind. Because that's exactly what is happening. You have to abandon yourself to even be around them. There's no space for anyone else. There's only room for the false character. Which is why if you try to hold on to any part of your own identity. They're going to reject you. And then they're going to eject you from a fantasy of their own making. Where you unknowingly became a participant. And then you stayed out of pity, guilt or a fawning response. And yet they twisted it in their minds as though you can't do without them. When they manipulated and abused you, they targeted your self-esteem. And then they left you to chase after your own sense of self, which they held hostage from you as a means to control you. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. 
hit that subscribe button to receive the notifications. And if you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.